Good day, YouTubers, and welcome to another episode. In this episode, I'm going to be installing the SCX20 satellite compass on my baseboard. This is a Furuno product, and it is arguably the heart of the system that I'm putting on the boat. It's a satellite compass, but it's far more than that. It's got four GPS antennas in it, one in each corner, and what that does is it lets you have pitch, roll, yaw, and heave compensation on all your signals. So it gives you an accurate pitch of the boat, the roll, the heave, which is the up and down motion over the waves, and the yaw, which is actually the compass function. That translates to a perfect bottom on your sounder, for one thing, and really, really accurate steering on your autopilot. So without this, it would only be half the system it could be. But pre for that's in the future, when I get the MFD, I'll put up some videos that really show what this is capable of. Well, I've got the first of the goodies for the latest upgrade. I'm just about to unbox them and have a look at them. Because of the current shortage of electronic components, this is going to be approximately a three month upgrade. But I'm sure it's going to be well worth it in the finish. Nicely packaged. I don't think there's anything in there. No. Nope. Seems empty. And that is the Bruno Satellite Compass, which is going to not only be the compass for the autopilot when it finally arrives, but also stabilisation for the sounder unit so that you get a clearer picture of what's happening on the bottom. Got an arrow on it that faces forward, nice little Bruno logos on it. That's the satellite head. Uh, NMEA cable goes in the bottom of it. Here we have the rest of the stuff. We have, uh, yep, the bits and pieces that you get in here. Installation details, uh, kits, so uh, yep, all that. Right, we've got all sorts of manuals here. I've got access to on the internet and I've pretty much read them all. Uh, we have some uh, mounting screws for this base here. I don't think I can fit the base on the boat where it needs to go. I think I'll just have to mount the unit directly without the base. Got some NMEA cable. And, yeah, some mounting bits and pieces. What's that there? What is that? Oh, thread bond. Wow, okay. Well, you can give you everything you need to mount it with. That is, that is exceptional. That is very exceptional. I'll just get this base out. Leave the rest of the stuff in there for now. But I want to take that base down. I'm sure it's not going to fit. However, there just might be a way. So I'll have a look at it and see what I can do. Well, I was right. I knew that the base wouldn't fit there. But I've got another issue. And that is that the unit itself is not going to fit there because it's nearly the size of the base and these rocket launchers and this bars in the road here. So that's going to be a problem. I'm going to have to make a mount. I could buy one, but I think they're exceedingly dear. I think I can weld one up a lot cheaper out of stainless. But we'll lift that up and I can mount it up there. Now bring it forward, little tube in the centre, leaned forward. That'll do the trick there. Yeah, alright, so I actually do need a mounting unit for that, so I'm going to have to work on that. doesn't need to be thick, about, I need something 2mm maybe, 2mm stainless would be enough for that, and just get someone to weld it up for me. Alright, I'll price some of that and see how it goes. This is some 2mm stainless steel sheet. I've got to cut a round piece out of it and a square piece for the mast. I've got to make a little mast for the GPS antenna, a satellite uh, stabilisation unit, I suppose they call it. I've just got to cut a square out of this so I can then make it round. My beautiful big drill press was moved by some workers that were out here to re-reef the shed when it got damaged the pail and somehow they damaged the wiring 
I can hear the sparking as soon as I put some power through it. It's not safe to use until I get that sorted, so I'm going to have to drill this by hand. There's a round plate I'm trying to cut for the base for the Fruno satellite compass. And I've had a couple of goes at it now. I tried putting it in a lathe first but I wasn't able to support it well enough for the cutting tool to work. It's only 2 mil stainless. Had I had a decent backing plate I could have done it, but I couldn't find anything to use. So I then decided that what I'd do is plasma cut it and then put it in the lathe and trim it up, but that didn't work either. I got the rough circle there, but trimming it up in the lathe hasn't worked. So now I'm going to draw it with a compass which is pretty awkward because I've got a hole in the centre so I've just got to put the compass point in the centre of the hole there and that has to be good enough and hopefully it is because that's my mark I've got to trim back to I'm figuring to get a cut off wheel and slice around it so that it's really close and then bring it over to the grinder, the bench grinder and finish it off I've got a magnetic drill press here. It's the best I've got at the moment. My big drill press has been broken by the insurance people that came out to do the roof. They moved the drill press and when I turn the power on I get a sizzle. So there's an electrical fault in it now, which wasn't there before they moved it. So not real happy, but I've got to make do with this at the moment. That is going to be interesting. I can TIG well steel, but I'm not real good at stainless steel. And I'm just going to try and put a couple of tacks on this so I can take it and get it done properly. But I do need to get tacked up so it doesn't move and everything's in the right spot. I'll take that somewhere now and get someone who's good at TIG welding to weld it up. At the moment, that's just enough to tack it. Alright, I'm just going to try and tack this now. Not sure how I'm going to go. I've got this random tin of mould with least wax just sitting there as a just to hold it in place while I try and tack it. Well, that's it. I'll just take it down and have a test fit. Well, that's the mast to mount the SCX20 on, the satellite compass. Yeah, now I've just got to drill it. I've got to drill three holes in the top there to mount the compass itself on, four holes in the bottom to mount it onto the boat, and one hole through the centre for NMEA cable. And I couldn't do it like I did the top one, but I ruined my brooch on that, so I'm going to have to try and do this one with a stepper drill and see how that works. My only choice really. Drilled some holes in this off camera. There's three holes in the top there, and that's the F there marks the front. You need to keep the antenna orientated as close as possible parallel to the center line of the boat. Four holes in the bottom to bolt it onto the stainless steel frame, and a hole through. Unfortunately I ruined my brooch during that top one. All I had was a step drill to do the bottom one and the step drill didn't go real well on the stainless steel. It was only a cheap Chinese one. So that hole's big enough but not overly so. It'll be fine. Now I've got to drill some holes in the uh, plate here. I've marked the four holes with a marking pin through the holes in the mast base. I've got a pot punch here. Oh, it's not doing much in the stainless steel. Bearish little mark. I wanted to punch them as I make sure I get them in the uh, right spot. Well, it's leaving a, it's leaving a dent. Geez, it's not a big dent. I'm going to put six mil bolts through this. I think I'm going to drill these six and a half mil. I'll put some marine plastic down under it. Uh, for two reasons. A, I don't want it to get any moisture in there because even 316 stainless steel will corrode if it's left with salt and moisture on it for too long. So I'm going to put this elastic there for that reason, but I'm also going to put it there 
to hold it in place because if I drill the holes six and a half millimetres slightly oversized that'll give me one or two degrees of wriggle in it which will let me line it up hopefully perfectly with the centre line of the boat and then this elastic will stop it from moving once that sets. So that's the plan. Four holes coming right up. Now I've got to figure out where I want the centre hole. Righty yeah, so that's the way it's going to sit. So, and this way we go one and a half inches back. Now I'm going to go 50 mil from that side. Yeah, it should come out. Yeah, that'll come out inside it. See if I can do it without a punch, because this one doesn't need to be as precise. Oh, the old door getting a bit blunt. Oh, stainless steel is not good on tools. That's probably still not going to be big enough for the plug. It doesn't have to be, it only has to be big enough for the wire. So I've got to cut the plug off one end because I'll never get it through these tubes. With a plug on it, I'll have to cut it off and splice it. But yeah, I can see daylight through there, so that's all good. Get the bolts to bolt it on and run some wire through the tube. I'll get the wire run tomorrow with luck and get the bolts on Monday on the way home from work. And I can bolt that on and put my GPS antenna on top of it. I'm going to mount the SCX20 antenna and to do that I need to run some wire through here and I think I'm going to have to replace this with something bigger because she's pretty well chock a block with wire at the moment I'll take it off, I think there's some elastic or sticker flex in there I was considering roundly cursing the idiot that decided to do that but on reflection I think that might have been me when I had to put a new aerial wire in there so I obviously had a good reason to do it at the time. Not terribly thrilled with it now, but must have made sense at the time. What is that? Probably white elastic, I guess. Ah, uh, get a screwdriver and dig that out. When I ran that aerial wire, it took me about half a day cursing and swearing. I hope I'm a little bit better prepared for it today. I've got a plan today anyway. We'll see how it works out. There we go. The light part wasn't too difficult. My preparation for this is to get some clothesline. I'm going to feed that up through there. In the finish, the plan is to leave the clothesline in there in case I want to drag anything else up there. Although it's going to be a tight squeeze with the wires that are already there. I might have to rewire them with something a little bit thinner. I did it all off camera, but I'll tell you the result. I got the aerial wire here, attached a couple of pieces of uh, clothesline to it, dragged them up from down there, all the way up through the tube and out here, and pulling the clothesline with it. Now I've got a wire poked in from this side. I've pulled him out this side and I'm attaching one of the pieces of clothesline to that. And then I'm going to duct tape that together so that it won't come apart and get caught on anything and pull it through to the other side. That'll let me feed all my wires through and once I've done that I am going to arrange to leave a piece of clothesline in there for future use because this is terrible getting this in. I, I spent half a day on it last time when I did the aerial wire because I didn't I just had so much trouble with it, and I still had a fair bit of trouble just getting it out. Uh, very tight spaces they've left me to work with. I might see if I can expand the hole a little bit very, very carefully because there's wires in it. So I don't want to cut them. I'll just make a bigger job, but I'll see if I can expand this hole down here. That's the biggest part of the problem. And then there's little holes up here where this breaks, but I can tilt the top back and get around them. They're not too bad. But yeah, I want to make this job easier because if I ever do decide to put radar on here, it's going to have to go up and uh, wiring through here. So that needs to be easier. 
The fitting this to my baseball is made far more difficult by the way the bimini is made. Don't get me wrong, it is really good, strong, solid construction. It's a great bimini, but they just didn't really cater for running wires through the tubes, or at least not many wires through the tubes. That made the whole job a lot harder than it needed to be. It took me a lot longer to get it done, and that's part of the reason why this video is broken into two segments. If it had been really easy to run the wires, I could have done it far quicker. I'll finish off the installation in part two of the video, and that should probably go up in another week's time. Until then, good fishing.